welcome. I'm Kim Weisenborn, and we're going to learn how to paint waves today. <laughs> so here is the painting of the waves that we're going to paint. What I would start with is the horizon line. And as you can see, the horizon line is not halfway through. It's up a ways because the focus is the waves, not the sky. So you want to make sure you start by putting in your horizon line. I'm drawing very dark because I want you to see it on the video, but in reality you would draw it very lightly on the watercolor paper so that you can erase it. Then I want to start by taking care of getting these little spaces in, all of these little negative spaces. And starting with that, we're going to put that in. This looks like sort of a thumb, so I'm just going to put that in. And I'm not going to worry about the raggedy edge of the wave yet. I'm just going to put in the basic shapes. Can you see that? I hope. And then this one. Okay. So that's where I would start. I wouldn't continue to go down because as you're doing them, you get very confused and lost. And it's just better to start one step at a time so that you don't get lost in the end. We're going to do phthalo blue. Yambo Jello and Magenta. Mm -hmm. go. You're going to wet the sky first, right to the horizon line, with clear water. So, this is actually a light blue so that you can see where I'm going with the clear water. And get it nice and wet. If you don't use enough water and you start getting, you'll get streaks. So if you're getting streaky with your sky wash, you just need to add more water to your You're just going to lay in your sky and see how nice and juicy that is. It's not streaky at all. This is how it should look. Um, I'm just laying it in side to side. And gently, I'm barely touching the paper. You don't want to touch the fibers too much because then they get all tired and raised and you, your wash goes dead. So you want to be careful. The less touching, the better. It looks like it needs the top needs a little bit more. So I'm just going to go over the top one more time. And I'll lay that in on top. Okay, so we're going to paint now the areas that we blocked out. These are the negative spaces in the painting, which are this shape right here, the dark parts that are, on, uh, that are not the white wave crest. They're the dark areas. So we filled them in, and now I'm going to show you how to get the texture of the top <laughs> of the wave. All right, so um, you're going to use your phthalo blue. And you can mix a little bit of the other colors in it to tone it down because it is in the distance. And when things are in the distance, they get softer, grayer, and less and lighter. So if you throw the other two colors in, it will neutralize the blue enough to make it look almost uh, have a gray quality to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take on dry paper make a line for the edge and I'm just going to do one shape at a time because if I go over here it's going to dry and be um, then I'll have lines and there are no lines in the ocean. So, here we go. so I'm using the side of the brush it's almost laying it flat on the paper and just lift it and then just use the side to get that nice frothy bit. Yeah frothy I like that word frothy. Frothy. Kind of nice, huh? So it's way better than anything we could do on our own. So then you take the next one and you get the line and then you use the side to get the little froth. Now before I move on, I want to soften some edges. You want to lose some edges. The reason we want to do that is we don't want it to look like I cut out white paper and put it on top. So I'll rinse my brush and I will touch an area inside the white and just move it up to the uh, blue that I just put in 
and it should and then suck up some of that color and then over here maybe you don't want to lose it everywhere you want to have some hard edges mostly toward the edge of the paper you don't want to have hard edges because it'll draw your eye over there and out of the picture so most of your soft should be there and then possibly here where I have the sea spray I'm just going to move it up into the sky a little bit we can pull that out later with a scrubby but that's how I want you to continue on with this just keep doing the line and then using the side of the brush and then go all the way here and do the same thing goes all the way across See, yeah. it's like a little bit of an arc, not a huge arc. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to draw this part. This is like a, a giant eye or an almond. And then this part is like a long snake touching, kissing the, let's say, a whale. Mm -hmm. Ooh, see it? So when I can put it into a shape like that, I can see it better and I can draw better. So I'm going to draw it. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the ragged edge. I'm just going to draw the basic shapes first, and then I'll put it into the shape later. So I'm seeing that the whale's mouth is not, it's more than halfway down. So I'm going to go a little past the halfway mark on my painting and maybe go to here. And then I'll draw my snake kissing it. And mm -hmm. so that's the drawing part. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did up here, but I'm going to wet it first because this is a big area. So I'll wet it. I'll use blue so you can see that I'm wetting it with light. It might be good for you to wet it with light blue too, just so you can see where you're going. And then taking a stronger paint mixed with the other two colors to tone it down a bit. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go up against the bottom of this wave the same way you did the top mm -hmm. with the side of the brush. You can hold the brush like this and it's easy. You can just roll it, bounce it, whatever it takes to get it. You go along the edges quickly while it's still wet. You don't have to copy the painting. You just uh, have to get the idea. Make sure you leave this nice white edge. So we're making, think about it, you're making a whale with hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so once you get the whale, you're going to go into uh, more color, deeper colors, I guess. And this is where you can sort of pop in some darks. Dark. Now this is really dark, it seems like ridiculously dark, but it will dry quite a bit lighter. And you can try more combinations of colors, like yellow and yellow and red make sort of an orange and I'm seeing some of that in here so I'm just dropping it in and letting it swim around see it's swimming it's swimming like the whale mm -hmm. so you can leave it at this point and let it I'm adding water just to make it swim a little more I don't like to push the paint I let the water and the tilt do yeah. that for me because it does a much better job than I ever could. Now before you let that dry though, you want to soften some edges. So you're going to wet down here and just come through. Pick it up with a thirsty brush. So you broke an edge there. No, no hard edge there. You might want to break one right here. Maybe over here. Just in enough places so it doesn't look like you cut this out and put it on a uh, glued it on top, you know. Okay, so there's a few lost edges. So that would be it for now. You can always go back in later and correct or darken. And then you want to go on and do the snake the same exact way. Okay? You started? Yes. Okay. We're going to do the drawing of the bottom part of this wave. So again, try to think of the shape that it is. It's pretty um, thick, a lot thicker than this one. 
and then it thins out like the other one. Uh, so we're just gonna, it's like a giant worm or something, but it has little feet. And let's not make all the feet the same size and distance apart. Then it would look contrived. So over here, there's like a little sweep and then it gets thin. Oh, I don't know if you can see my pencil, can you? I'll just go yeah, back sorry. over a little bit. There we go. Keep forgetting to do that. All right, so then it gets really thin. So then you do that. And again, um, this time we're going to be meeting the where the wave um, and the floor meet, the floor of the ocean or the, the surface of the ocean meet right about here, this line. So um, you want to wet, I'm going to do it with light blue again. You're going to wet, it's a little dark, all the way. And this has to be a lot of water. So you want to just like practically dump water on this so it doesn't go dry. Maybe a couple of times go over it. It just has to be swimming all the way down to the bottom. The reason we do that is so we don't get a firm line in the ocean because there really is no line. Wouldn't make sense to have one. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, the same colors that we used to make the whale. And we're just going to go up and we're going to create this ragged edge again. You might have to dry your brush because, because I wet it so much. It's now... Uh, not making the ragged edges easily. So you don't want to work too slowly. Don't think about it so much. Just, uh, I find sometimes the more haphazard I am, the better it the looks. Better. <laughs> yeah. If I think too much and I'm worrying over it too much, then it starts to look overthought. It's like cooking, you don't want to stir the pot too much. And then I'm going to take the line that I, that is sort of a natural soft line that I'm seeing and I'll put it in. That's to start with. Now this is going to be way too light. So when, in order to make a dark stay, you have to use almost pure pigment without any water in your brush. So I'm just going to go straight on the pigments Oops, this one. Uh, that's way too red, so I keep going back until I get mostly a blue. I think that's it. Yes. Wow. Now that's a little too blue for my taste. I'm just going to lay it in. That's going to dry so light. I'm going to have to go over it and over it just to get it to stick. Mm -hmm. Plus, I'm losing my line, but don't worry if you lose your line. You can bring it back and after it's dry, you can play with it. I'm going to just add some brown, the red and the or, uh, yellow together. Makes sort of the brown when you put it with the blue. I'm going to go up in here. And right now it seems extreme, right? But watercolor will dry quite a bit lighter. I'm going to go back to the blue on this side. You can add all these little darks while you have this color in your brush. Right up to the edge where the... I, don't, I tend to not want to tilt it because uh, it's going to ruin the line. So here I'm having some kind of fun little reflection. So I'm going to pull that out. Do you see that right there, mm -hmm. that little... Right here, I guess, yep. on this painting, you see it. Uh, that little, yeah, yeah, right there. Your shadow's coming. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to pull it out with a thirsty brush and hope uh, you want to keep your eye on it and make sure it doesn't close back in. But if it does, um, you, it's okay. You know, you just got to let things be. I'm going to put a little more blue in here. It's quite light.
At this point, you want to pop in darks just under the crest of the wave. So I have, look at my dark in my palette. I just keep going back in there and touching areas. Okay, so in about five minutes, 10 minutes, this is gonna change quite a bit and then we'll wait and see what happens. I'm gonna leave it for now. So um, to, in order to soften, I, I have forgotten to soften after I put it all in. So I have all these hard edges, which tend to make it look less real. If you look at this one, it's very, it's got some softness to it. And that's why it looks like it's part of the painting. Here it looks like it's unfinished and not part of the painting. So in order to do that, you take a scrubby, which is a very stiff bristled brush, kind of like a, in the olden days when we did stenciling, it has a flat bottom. I think you can buy a scrubby on the click. You want to rinse it, have it be very clean because what you're doing is you're scrubbing just an edge. Ooh, it's a little wet there. See how I just lost that edge? And you swipe it with a paper towel mm -hmm. and it just softened it. You can, and you keep rinsing. Each time you do it, you have to rinse. So I can completely obliterate that edge and swipe and it's gone. And then maybe over here, it looks a little unnatural. I'm going to scrub an area here. You don't have to scrub too hard, but you do have to scrub with a clean brush. So some colors are going to stain, so you, they may not scrub. So I'll have another solution for that. Maybe here, here. starts to look more like it's part of the environment. Okay, so let's say your color is a stainer and you're having trouble getting it to, like I had something come into my wave here, you're having trouble getting it to look like it's part of the environment and the scrubby's not working. You can take a very pale, maybe a, with a little bit of lavender in it, a little bit of that magenta, Let's put it on there. Just like a pale gray basically. And you can go over, um, if you look, the waves have shadows, um, mostly when they're coming down here and, and they're light on the top. So you can just sort of dab in some shadows at the bottom and that will help make it look less crispy, I guess, for lack of a better word. If this is the stage where everybody says, oh, I have to throw it in the trash because it doesn't look like anything. And it, this is a stage also, it's like three quarters of the way, where you want to put it on the floor and look at it from a distance. Because when you're right on top of it, it stops looking like what you want it to look like and starts to look like an abstract craziness. Um, but it just means you need to press through and finish with your darks. So um, the next stage I'm going to, talk about is the little foam on the floor of the ocean. The, the, they're basically they're uh, ellipses, an, an irregular ellipse, not perfect, and they're all different sizes and they're fairly close together but they're not touching so that there will be this white between them. So you want to have some longer, some skinnier, some fatter, some shorter, just as long as they're random. I hope you can see this through the... Yes. You're seeing it? Okay. Okay, so we'll do a few. And the idea is to have light around each one. So you start with one, and you should be on dry paper. The paper should not be wet at this point. Maybe do two. And you don't want them to be all the same uh, flat. Like uh, some could be dark on one side. So pop in a little bit of color. 
So maybe you do three, and then it's strange if they're just on there without any soft edges. So again, you can soften an edge by maybe bringing water to it and bring some clear water to the edge, and that way it's not looking like it's cut out and pasted on. I'll just bring some clear water right to the edges, and maybe the top of some and the bottom, and maybe connect one or two. Then it starts to look like it's part of the environment. So you want to just continue on and do the rest of your little circles, taking it three at a time so you're not getting overwhelmed and you don't get your soft edges. Okay? Standing. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create more of that line and a solid shadow behind this wave. It's kind of too light here. So in this stage, you want to start comparing, squinting and comparing the difference between yours and the final piece. So I'm just going to go over this again. And I'm, I'm working on dry paper. And I can tighten this up a little bit. And I'm just taking that same blue and running it through. At this point, you could also use this to soften the bottom of your wave. But I want to make sure that I keep this line right here. And of course I have this hard edge line, which I don't want. So you're gonna rinse the brush and then touch the bottom and just touch that edge so it yeah. creeps out nice and soft. Let's darken some of this up here. And then you can use the clean brush to maybe give shadows to the bottom of your wave. And that's one way of softening the wave. And then you wanna go back in here as well. And it got a little light, so I'm gonna do the same thing. You don't want it to be a solid. You want to see how there's, mm -hmm. oops, there's some, <laughs> oops, sorry. <laughs> there's some light in there. So you can wet this edge. You don't have to take it all the way through. Get under here, a little bit darker. These darks are really good in showing that there's a turning happening in the way. And they keep disappearing, so you have to keep adding them. My painting's looking more and more like a winter ocean. Then you can even go up here, and uh, sometimes this gets a little too light and reestablish this and on this side I don't know, I have to stand up to see if it's <coughs> looking more and more like an ocean a little bit I think I need more over here See so yeah, how just that dark brought this wave forward mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is this the dancing you're talking about, Susan? <laughs> I'm really aware of it now. I'm yeah. dancing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a light feathery touch that. That's what gives her that, that kind of yeah. That that look. Gonna... Yeah, I'm like dotting, still lightly dotting the picture. My whale looks beached. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so you just keep going until you feel like you've, uh, and then maybe some, like sometimes it's in water to show that it's flat. You can do like a thin long line. Sometimes these are really great tools to get it to look like the water's laying flat is to have, you yeah. know, a line. And then you can darken these a little bit, you know, just keep going until you feel like you're done. Okay. Voila. Voila. I see an elbow. Which is that? Yours? It's yours. <laughs> okay. okay. Wanda's wave turned out so well, she inspired me to do a new one. So I am leaving you at the end with this lovely wave painting that I'm proud of. And I hope that you all succeed and come up with something that you can be proud of too. Just remember, keep practicing. <laughs>